irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust is an agreement allowing property to be held by one party for the benefit of another. It stipulates that it cannot be readily revoked, amended, or altered. It's commonly used for estate planning and asset protection purposes. Now, a trust is a legal tool that consists of a settler who has a trust created, a trustee who manages the trust, and one or more beneficiaries who receive the benefits of the trust. You'll also hear the settler are referred to as a grantor or trustor. Now, that next question we answer is about revocable versus irrevocable trusts and how they compare. I've been in the asset protection business for over 25 years. We have over 40,000 clients, and we have established literally thousands of companies and trusts. Revocable versus irrevocable trusts. A revocable trust, commonly a revocable living trust, is an estate planning tool that a settler can change at any time. So if your needs change, you can make amendments freely without the interaction of a third party. So why doesn't everybody set up a trust that's revocable as opposed to irrevocable? It's because the living trust is part of your own estate for tax and asset protection purposes. So a revocable trust offers little protection from creditors or those who seek to sue you. It also offers no segregation of assets in order to qualify for Medicaid assistance. Plus, upon your death, such a trust is also yours for state and federal tax purposes. Why irrevocable? The primary reason people use irrevocable trusts is to protect assets from lawsuits. Legal theory, theory commonly allows a creditor to step into the shoes of the debtor. It allows the creditor to do what he or she could have done. For example, let's say the settler of a trust could freely change the beneficiary. The one who sued the settler could step into his or her shoes and change the beneficiary to himself. If the trust allowed the settler to independently spend trust assets on himself, the creditor could do the same. Plus, some people use irrevocable trust to make sure that others carry out their wishes when they are no longer around. This is common in second marriages where the spouse wants to make sure that the children from the first marriage get at least some of the assets. So I can never change it? Well, no, it's not quite like that as there are often ways to make changes. It depends on how the trust was drafted and the jurisdiction in which it was created. But if, if the purpose is asset protection, the changes often require the approval of a third party such as a trustee. Most trusts for this purpose are discretionary trusts. For example, if you decide to cut out a beneficiary or add a new one, simply ask the trustee. The trustee at its discretion can do so. Now, the trustee has discretion to decide whether the act would be in the best interest of the trust or not, and if doing so would put trust assets in harm's way. With most irrevocable trusts, the settlers or beneficiaries may request that the trustee make certain changes, and the trustee can generally do so if it does not put trust assets at risk. So to say it another way, if you could change it directly, the judge could force you to change the beneficiary to your legal enemies. So by making it irrevocable, you are more likely to get what you want, the use of trust assets for yourself and your family. By requiring third-party intervention, it ties the judge's hands from directly forcing you to make changes against your will. Now, there are many types of irrevocable trusts, and not all are for asset protection. There are trusts to hold life insurance, for charitable purposes, to reduce the tax bite, and to care for those with special needs. Allowances for the unforeseen. Now, properly drafted trusts allow for a wide range of future possibilities. For example, there are circumstances that would warrant a change of beneficiaries of the trust. Perhaps mom and dad would unexpectedly have another child. One child exhibits evidence of long-term substance abuse. One child has a tragic military accident while the parents are still living. The trustee dies. A well-drafted trust addresses all of these circumstances. So how can it be irrevocable if I can really change it? 
Now notice the operative word I. Irrevocable doesn't necessarily mean that nobody on the planet can change it. It does not mean that you cannot suggest a change to someone else. It just means that certain people cannot independently, without outside cooperation, change it. And this is a good thing. Remember, if you could just change the beneficiary at whim, the judge could force your whim to be your legal enemy at law. Now, we all have control, but if the trust is written improperly and you have complete power to change the trust, then you will likely get creamed in the courtroom. At that point, the judge would be the only one who would have the control, and that would likely not be a good thing for you. That's because he'll force you to use that control and change the beneficiary to the person who sued you. And that will allow them to take all the money out of the trust in order to satisfy the judgment. So to have real control, set up an irrevocable trust with an independent trustee, then put yourself in control instead of the guy who is suing you. You can get more information on how they work and how they're used and what they do by calling Asset Protection Planners at 1-800-830-1055 or by visiting AssetProtectionPlanners.com. Thank you.